Schatz. Welcome back guys to another Clash Royale video. Today we're taking a look at the deck that I'm currently using on my main account for these new challenge mode tournaments. As you can see I finished with 11 wins and 3 losses, losing my final battle before that final reward tier, making a couple stupid mistakes in the battle that resulted in my loss. Mistakes that I knew I shouldn't have made, but sometimes I think the pressure just gets in your head, knowing you're one win away from that final reward tier, and knowing you're only one loss away from being knocked out of the tournament. But here's the deck I'm using, it is a giant balloon deck, and I have done a video on this deck in the past, but with the recent update and the round of balance changes, I figured it warranted another video. Now my other go-to deck for these new challenge tournaments is this Pekka 3 Musketeer strategy, so if you want to see a video on this in the future, let me know in the comment section below, and I can definitely make that happen. But let's go ahead here, open up this ch uh, chest that I finally got, getting 1600 gold, and 7 Inferno Towers, been seeing a lot of people using Inferno Towers recently in these tournaments. What do we have here? 70 Barbarians. Definitely pretty good for the 10 a gem cost. And finally, one Expo. Never going to use that card. But overall, not too bad for only a 10 gem entry cost. Let's go ahead here and take a look at a few replays using this deck in this tournament. So here we are, guys, facing off against a Hog Rider Miner strategy. Now, fortunately, I have the perfect starting hand in this battle with the Giant as well as the Balloon. Always prefer having those two cards in my starting hand. That way, if my opponent starts out with a pump, like my opponent does in this battle, I can do an immediate push with the Giant as well as the Balloon to try and catch my opponent off guard. Now watch how my opponent defends this. As you can see, he has the Minion Horde available, but he's gonna go ahead and use the Miner to soak up the Ice Spirit and then use the Minion Horde. Otherwise, the Zap Ice Spirit combo would have killed his Minion Horde entirely. So pretty cool defense by him. But in the end, we do take out the tower, giving myself the one crown lead. Now I'm gonna go ahead here and miss half of these troops with a Fireball, just because I wanted to. So as you can see, that's kind of what happens when you start out with the perfect starting hand with this deck. But the opposite is very much true for starting out with a bad starting hand. And I don't want to sound like I'm making excuses here, but I honestly feel the three losses that I had in this tournament were a strong result of having the worst starting hand possible and facing up against somebody having a very strong starting hand. For example, if I use this deck and I'm facing up against somebody that uses the pump as their first move and I have the worst hand possible at the beginning of the battle, I have nothing that I can do to punish them for placing down that pump. And then through the rest of the battle, I feel like I'm playing catch up from that initial opening exchange. So there's definitely a bit of a luck factor involved in this game in terms of having a good card rotation. But that's pretty much true for any card-based game. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you agree with me or do you not agree with me? Now my tower on the right hand side is sitting at 312 health. I'm going to try desperately to defend it and save it. But unfortunately it won't be able to. Because my opponent's deck is just much faster cycling than mine. And I don't have my cannon available with his hog rider. So instead of trying to spend more elixir to save that tower. I'm going to do an immediate giant balloon push. Because I know my opponent spent a ton of elixir on that push. But in the end, he drops on the Barbarians as well as the Minion Horde. I am able to get one hit off with that Balloon, but it's not really enough considering it cost me 10 Elixir for that push. Gonna go ahead and use that Fireball and once again miss half the troops, just having tons of fun with those Fireball placements. Now the ideal push with this strategy, with the Giant as well as the Balloon, if your opponent has Barbarians or has Minions or stuff like that, is to do a Giant Balloon Fireball push, but that's only really possible in the Double Elixir period. So that's when this deck really does shine. So I'm going to go ahead here with an immediate giant balloon push. He draws on the Barbarians. Now, as you can see, finally having enough elixir for that Fireball because it is the double elixir period. Fireball landing, taking out the Minion Horde as well as the Barbarians, giving me huge value. And the Balloon finishing on that tower, giving me the one crown lead. And all I have to do at this point forward is defend for the next 29 seconds. And I should be able to hold out for the two crown victory. But as Hog Rider sneaking in there, the cannon going down a half second too late, not able to distract it. So my tower is sitting at less than 900 health, trying desperately to defend it for these last 15 seconds. But my opponent is using the Miner, which can get chip damage on over time. Trying to predict the location there with that giant, but I missed it. But in the end, with only 7 seconds left and 766 health left on my tower, I am able to hold out for the 2 crown victory. Let's go ahead here to the next replay. So here we are guys, facing off against somebody using an expo in a tournament. Definitely a first time for me. Now I want to talk a very quick second here about the deck itself in regards to the Fireball. The reason I have the Fireball in this deck here is I've been facing against a ton of people that are using the Three Musketeers strategy and the Fireball is just such a strong counter against the Three Musketeers. But if you guys don't face against too many Three Muskies, then I would actually suggest using the Arrows instead because the Arrows are one Elixir cheaper which makes it easier to afford on a Giant Balloon push. And that one Elixir difference means you can have the Arrows up like one or two seconds faster which could mean the difference between killing that minion horde 
allowing your giant balloon push to make it to the tower or not killing that minion horde and having the minion horde take out your balloon before it gets his way to the tower. So like I said, if you don't face too many people using three musketeers, I would suggest using the arrows instead of the fireball. And the arrows also have the added benefit of being an equal elixir trade against princesses and also of course the wider radius, making it easier to kill everything you want to kill. But I also want to talk about the rage spell because the rage spell was changed in this recent update, reducing the elixir cost down to two elixir. So I'm thinking you can probably fit a rage spell in this deck instead of the ice spirit and make it work pretty well with only a two elixir cost. So definitely if you guys want to try that out, go ahead and switch out the Rage Ball. I would suggest switching it out for the Ice Spirit. Now my opponent wastes his only air defense on the left hand side with that Musketeer. So as soon as I know that his only air defense is out of rotation, I'm going to do an immediate Giant Balloon push on the right hand side. And thankfully his Expo is locked onto my Giant. Both the Giant as well as the Balloon doing work to his tower giving me the one crown lead. Notice the cannon there on the left hand side, only three elixir taking out that six elixir expo. Definitely have a pretty strong lead so far in this battle with the balloon going onto the king tower, getting a couple hits off, bringing it down to 2200 health. And now that his king tower has less health than the tower on the left hand side, I'm gonna try and go for that three crown victory. So I'm gonna try and cycle back here to my giant balloon combo and make that final push to win the game. Gonna go ahead and do a slow push in the left hand lane though with my Valkyrie as well as my Musketeer because I do have to cycle to my giant balloon combo and I might as well put some pressure on the opposite lane to hopefully force some cards out of my opponent. And as you can see, he wastes the Musketeer. So as soon as I know he wasted his only strong air defense, I'm gonna put on some immediate pressure with the giant as well as the balloon on his side of the arena, being super aggressive, trying to catch him off guard. Now the balloon makes it to the king tower, getting a couple hits off. Hopefully it'll be able to finish it off, but in the end it dies with 271 health left on the king tower so all i need at this point is a fireball zap combo to win the game gonna go ahead and use the giant there to hopefully distract the expo then use the fireball to hit that tower hit the musketeer and then use the ice spirit to cycle to my zap spell getting the three crown victory here let's go ahead to one final replay so here we are guys now this battle was extremely crazy and things got really intense and stressful especially later on in the overtime period but first i want to hear about your guys' thoughts on these new challenge mode tournaments what do you think about them? Are you happy with them? And what kind of success are you having in these tournaments? Let me know in the comment section below. I want to hear what kind of decks you guys are using to win in these challenge mode tournaments. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the Valkyrie to counter that princess and then hopefully you can go back there and get a couple hits off on that Furnace. Now I didn't really have the best card rotation in this battle. Would have much preferred to have my Giant as well as the Balloon available here because as soon as he wasted the Ice Wizard, I would have done an immediate push on the right hand lane with both the Giant as well as the Balloon. But in the end, we defended pretty well, only taking a little bit of chip damage to my tower. But I have a pretty bad hand here, so I'm forced to use the cannon in the middle of my base to cycle through some cards and also defend against those fire spirits. He's going to start doing a slow push on the left-hand side with that Dark Prince. So I'm going to counter with a Giant also on the left-hand lane to hopefully soak up the charge attack from the Prince. Going to go ahead and use the Fireball there to take out the Apprentice as well as the uh, Furnace. Looking back at it, probably wasn't the best decision. But the Giant crossing the bridge finally. Going to go ahead and support him with a Ice Spirit as well as a Musketeer. The Ice Spirit will freeze the Prince, but the Musketeer's damage isn't enough by itself to take it out. The Giant does die before making it to the tower, but thankfully the Musketeer does kill the Prince. And then she's going to turn around and kill the Ice Wizard as well, getting some pretty good value for that 4 Elixir cost for the Musketeer. And in the end, she's also able to kill two of the Fire Spirits, getting even more value. Now, my hand here isn't really ideal. I can't really do a Balloon Push with the Valkyrie, so I'm forced to use the Valkyrie to cycle to my Giant. Going to go ahead and use the Valkyrie behind the tower, because I know my opponent is using a Miner deck, and just in case he decided to use the Miner behind my tower, I have the Valkyrie there. But he decided not to. He decided to sit back with that Dark Prince. As soon as he uses the Dark Prince in the left-hand lane, I'm going to try and do an immediate push on the right-hand side with the Giant as well as the Balloon. He's going to go ahead and use the Princess in the middle of the base. And then he's going to do a counter push in the opposite lane with both Princes. And we're actually going to trade towers here. I don't have enough Elixir to defend against this double Prince push. Looking back at it, I probably should have used this cannon here in the middle of my base instead of using it to tank for the Prince because the cannon would have survived longer doing more damage to the Prince and might have been able to take it out before the tower died. But in the end, we do exchange towers. So pretty smart move by my opponent there doing that counter push with both Princes as soon as he knew he had no chance to defend against my giant balloon push. So here we are guys with 38 seconds left both towers down but the benefit that i have with having one of his towers down is i'll be able to hopefully drop down a giant balloon push immediately on his side of the arena to put on some strong pressure but his ice wizard is such a strong counter to my balloon slowing it down only allowing it time to get one hit off and take a look at this counter push that he's setting up two dark princes as well as a regular prince and ice wizard and a princess 
Gonna go ahead and use the Zap spell to reset the charge attack on both princes, saving a ton of health on my cannon and actually allowing the cannon as well as the tower's time to finish off both princes. So pretty clutch defense there. Now gonna go ahead once again with a giant balloon push on his side of the arena, but take a look at what happens. His furnace distracts both my giant as well as the balloon, and after the furnace goes down, the balloon goes to the king tower instead of going to his tower on the left hand side. So as soon as I see that happen, I know I have to change up my strategy a little bit because I don't want my balloon going to the king tower. I want it to go to the tower that's already at 1600 health. So this time, I want to do a giant balloon push on the left hand lane instead of in the middle of his side of the arena. So Valkyrie Musketeer going up on the right hand side. Once I hit 10 Elixir, going to do an immediate giant balloon push there on the left hand lane and hopefully make it to the tower. Now we're making a race here to see who can finish off the tower first. My Ice Spirit freezing his Ice Wizard, allowing the balloon to make it to his tower. Both of his princes coming in, but the Zast Belt reset their charge attacks and in the end I get the two crown victory anyways guys that's the end of the video I really hope you enjoyed it if you did please show your support by hitting the like button and if you want to see some more Clash Royale strategy videos make sure to hit that subscribe button and like I said before I want to hear what kind of decks you guys are using in these tournaments so let me know in the comment section below but thanks so much for watching guys and we will see you in the next video